Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first Thesis 2.1 launch party session. Uh, Thesis 2.1 it has been released, well, Thesis 2.1 has been working in beta for, I don't know, four months, something like that, and it has been released publicly in beta here uh, last week, and I expect to see it released in its uh, final version here in the next few days. And so it's time for us to just jump into the middle of this thing and take a look at what's available in the new thesis. Now, there's one thing I would ask you to do for me, though, and that is um, if you get benefit out of this video um, or out of this seminar, would you please consider plus oneing it or liking it on Facebook or you know, tweeting the uh, tweeting about it or something like that. I would uh, really appreciate that. If you're watching this seminar live, of course, you don't actually have that opportunity yet because the videos aren't posted. But these videos will be posted and live here. And well, hopefully, we're going to post them tomorrow, so they'll be available for folks to watch again. But anyway, we have three sets of seminars happening this week. Today's seminar is going to be focused on what Thesis 2.1 can do for beginners, what it can do for people who don't have a technical background and don't intend to attempt to acquire a technical uh, background, but that want to use Thesis because of its power to create, you know, a somewhat customized looking uh, website or blog. Uh, and that's the focus of today. On Wednesday, we will be ratcheting up a notch and we'll be talking, uh, or our focus will be on what Thesis 2.1 brings to the DIY web designer, you know, the person who's building their own website and really wants to, you know, understand how Thesis works and plans on getting their hands dirty by learning how to use a skin editor and actually want to do something hoopy and crazy with their site that they're hoping that Thesis 2.1 lets them do. And then finally, our Friday morning session will be focused on the professional web developer, web designer, actually, not web developer. And there we'll really be talking about the more technical aspects of Thesis 2.1 and how it can streamline your development process and how you can use it to uh, rapidly prototype websites and uh, develop skins and websites for clients. So that's the scope of our uh, sessions for this week. I'm really excited about Thesis 2.1 because I think Thesis 2.1 is going to knock your socks off. And I, there are six main reasons why uh, Thesis 2.1 is a spectacular development platform for folks who are creating their own websites or who are creating websites for other people. And the first one is that Thesis 2.1 makes creating a customized responsive site really easy. There are lots of responsive skins and themes out there, and child themes, and that sort of thing, but they have very limited ability for you to customize them. However, with the advent of Thesis 2.1 and with the addition of the new classic responsive skin, it becomes quite simple for you to customize the skin while still preserving its its responsiveness. And we're going to spend all time all day long today working in the new classic responsive skin. One of the things you'll observe is that in the classic responsive skin, embedded elements are automatically responsive. So when we put images or video or other things inside of the content uh, of the site, um, that stuff is going to automatically be responsive. And it comes with uh, quite a nice, simple, lightweight, responsive menu, which you'll get a chance to see here in just a few minutes. And in fact, if you want a quick little preview of that, if you come on over here, I'm going to give you the link to this, actually. I'm going to post the link in the chat window so everybody can see it. And uh, you can use that link to come over and take a look at this site yourself. This is the Responsinator site. And this is what the site will look like in mobile devices once we are completed with it. So right now, obviously, I'm logged in, so you see all that extra stuff. But this is what the site's going to look like when we're done with it today. And this is what a brand new beginner with no experience with web design, no experience with customizing Thesis can do right out of the box. So Thesis Classic makes this easy. 
Okay, number two reason why Thesis 2.1 is going to knock your socks off is that Thesis 2.1 exploits the latest SEO strategies. And so Thesis 2 employed a schema in the HTML, and what schema does is uh, essentially identify what the different elements on the page are so that search engines can tell uh, where the main content is, where the subsidiary content is, where the main headline is, you know, what are the sub points and the organizational outline of the content. And all of that kind of stuff is built into uh, Thesis 2.1. And as all versions of Thesis, it gives you full control over all of the SEO meta tags. And this is one of the things that made Thesis such an innovative theme when it first came out, because it included this function, which once upon a time required you to use a plugin, but Thesis included it without the plugin. And it still includes all of those tools, those tools that you may be familiar with in Thesis. One of the newest things is, though, that it makes setting up uh, the Google authorship thing just slam dunk simple. When you do Google searches and you see somebody's name beside the article or beside the search results, that whole icon author name thing is created via the Google authorship system. And you know, you used to have to paste a whole bunch of code in different places and try and make cross links and try to make that whole thing work. But Thesis 2 just simplifies the daylights out of that process and just makes it a, a very simple setting for you to do. And all of a sudden, your content now can have your shining mug next to it, which will help you quite a bit. Okay, the third reason why Thesis 2.1 is going to knock your socks off is that similar to Thesis 2.0 it is infinitely customizable and this really kind of falls into a couple of different categories the first category is for the non-techie right somebody who doesn't know anything uh, about customizing web pages still has complete control over their fonts uh, Thesis 2.1 the classic responsive skin uh, comes with a cool color scheme generator and uh, this gives the non-technical user complete control over all of the colors that are used on their site. There aren't any colors anymore that are displayed on the site that happen automatically or that you don't automatically have control over. From now on, all of the colors on your site, regardless of what they are, uh, can be controlled inside of the Thesis Classic Responsive Skin by simply you know, choosing a color for those elements. And on top of that, you also have a lot of control over the layout. This is for the non-technical person, right? The, the non-technical person without opening up the skin editor and uh, simply by selecting options in content and in display options can have a great deal of control over its layout. Now, on the other hand, for the DIY techie, you know, you know who you are. Probably many of you in the webinar are one of those. And also professional web designers, this is just a revolutionary uh, product, right? It makes it possible for you to have easy custom templates for everything, right? No PHP required, no uh, code editing required. All you have to do is use the drag and drop interface to create custom templates. And you can have custom templates, various custom templates that you can assign to posts, various custom templates to assign to pages. You have uh, templates for the blog page, template for a front page. You can have custom templates for any of your archive pages, your category pages, tag pages, custom taxonomy pages, custom taxonomy archives, uh, or custom post type archives, custom post types. Really, if it's possible for there to be a WordPress template for something, then Thesis 2.1 gives you complete control over those templates and allows you to create any number of custom templates for anything you may want. There's really nothing like that in the marketplace besides Thesis 2.1. Thesis 2.1 has more template control than Thesis 2.0 did, uh, even, because 2.1 has the uh, custom post type archives that 2.1 did not have or 2.0 did not have so custom templates for absolutely everything stuff that you know if you've worked in other uh, themes or if you worked in thesis 185 you know that to create custom templates 
uh, for things like posts or for a custom archive pages required a whole bunch of extra PHP and if you work in Genesis or something like that and you want to create custom templates you know, you'll end up needing to uh, you know create those templates from scratch from copies of other templates whereas in thesis that stuff is just slam dunk drag and drop and as part and parcel of that is is that really you can have widget areas wherever the heck you want them you're not stuck with them in one place or in another you can add any number of widget areas to your site you can have any widget combination you want on any template that you want because the way the template editor works you have absolute control over all of those things and I mean one an, an example of this something that used to be pretty complicated is very simple in that you can have as many different menus as you want so if you want uh, one set of menus on one page and another set of menus on another page that's not a problem it is it is uh, absolutely easy to have multiple menus uh, multiple menu configurations as many menus as you want wherever you want regardless of what type of content it is or what type of uh, taxonomy it is um, any menu anywhere anytime really this the net result of that is that there are absolutely no HTML limitations in thesis 2.1 there is nothing you can't do in 2.1 really a and all the HTML that you want to do you're gonna do just with a, a drag-and-drop interface it is infinitely customizable okay number four thesis 2.1 allows very complex customization via drag and drop you know stuff that used to require a ton of PHP now requires none you know just some examples I already mentioned like adding different menus in different places adding different widget areas in different places creating multiple widget areas all of that sort of stuff used to require a fair bit of PHP and now it requires none now necessarily not everything is drag and drop right not everything is as simple as simply uh, opening up the template editor and dragging one box in and dropping it and dragging another box in and dropping it because this thing is so powerful that there's actually going to be some stuff you need to learn in order to use it properly now I think 2.1 is a fair bit more intuitive than 2.0 was but something that people stumbled on was that they had figured out 185 and they didn't really want to have to learn anything new but they wanted all the new power and you know unfortunately that's not reality and it's not reality here either there you get an awful lot of power um, but there will be stuff for you to learn when you are uh, taking on advanced customization techniques when you're doing this uh, drag and drop customization and there will probably still be some code for you to write there will be CSS you may need to write and um, stuff like that so very complex things can be done with drag and drop but not everything can be done that way and as soon as you decide you're going to jump into the whole drag and drop massive customization opportunity at that point you're gonna to have to learn how to do some of that stuff thesis 2.1 is gonna knock your socks off number five because it almost entirely eliminates the need for FTP you know once upon a time uh, way back when in WordPress everything you did required FTP when I first started in WordPress there was nothing that you could do inside the dashboard everything had to be done inside of FTP and even through thesis 185 quite a bit of stuff still required you to use FTP in order to make it all come together so for example you uh, you know 2.1 no longer requires you to set any permissions using FTP you don't have to rename any folders everything can be done from inside the dashboard and the only reason I say you know almost entirely eliminates FTP is because you know FTP is still a critical and crucial skill set for a WordPress site owner to have I believe and so I still teach FTP and I still think it's very important and useful and uh, it's useful for problem solving it's useful for getting yourself out of things that blow up on your site and so it's still a useful skill to have but I use FTP much less frequently today than 
I did before Thesis 2. And in that regard, actually, Thesis 2.1 and Thesis 2.0 are identical. They, they have the same lack of need for FTP. And then item number six is that Thesis 2.1 almost entirely eliminates the need for a separate code editor. So if you are a DIYer or if you are a web developer or a web designer, you know, in the first place, you're almost never going to have to write PHP. Right, if you come in, if you're coming to Thesis 2.1 from uh, from 1.85, um, you are familiar with all the customization that you can do with PHP. And as odd as this sounds in the regular WordPress world, you lo you learned more PHP than you learned anything as you were trying to learn how to customize your site. Well, these days, uh, you almost will never need to write any PHP code, no matter what your customization is. Almost everything can be done without writing PHP. And so you don't need a code editor for that. Uh, Thesis 2.1 does come with a code editor as part of the dashboard. And nowadays, syntax highlighting is included. So if you're editing, if you're writing some CSS, now you can tell whether or not you've written it correctly because the, it's employing syntax highlighting. And it's not exactly an error checking code editor, but it fairly obvious when something fails when you've when you have a syntax error inside of the uh, code editor uh, because of the syntax highlighting. And one totally cool new thing is the uh, implementation of this point-and-click code insertion that I'm going to demonstrate tomorrow. Uh, the code editor does have this ability for you to create snippets and automatically insert those snippets into specific locations and uh, just with the click of a mouse. So it's a totally cool system that uh, you know, unless you are going to do something very advanced. So if you are a web developer and you are going to develop your own skin, or yes, your own custom skin from scratch, sure, you're going to need to use a code editor. But the number of those of you who are doing that is, are very small. And most web design work is going to be able to be done with a combination of a pre-existing child theme or a pre-existing skin and then the customization, the base level of customization that exists inside of Faces itself. And so in that case, you're never you're not going to have to use a code editor again. OK, so that's six reasons why Thesis 2.1 is going to blow your socks off.